Okay, we ever take a pretty tricky looking integral. We've got the integral from minus two pi to two pi of x squared minus sine squared x over one minus e to the x dx. Okay, the first thing I noticed here is just the symmetric bounds. This usually sticks out as, usually we're gonna wanna use that somehow. The first thing I look for is even or odd functions. If the function was odd and we have symmetric bounds, then the whole thing would be zero. But clearly this isn't odd where we have all these square terms, so that's not gonna work. Now, the other thing we could check for is just to see if the whole thing's even, like the numerator is definitely even with the term squared. Uh, constant value is actually even, but this value is not even or odd. So we can't really use that simplification either. But what I can do with the symmetric balance, this is actually a good case for us to use King's principle. And let's just look at that formula really quick. So looking at our formula for King's principle down here to the right, it's gonna allow us to transform our integral. If, if this right here is our f of x here, we get to transform it into this form and hopefully that helps us. Now the reason I like to do it in this case where we have the symmetric bounds for this a and b value, right? Like a is our lower bound, b is our upper, upper bound. The reason this is nice is because when we do b plus a, b plus a here, that's just gonna be equal to zero. So when we have, so for this transform value here, because b plus a is zero, we just end up with f of minus x. So let's use the formula and see what happens to this thing. So the bounds stay the same, so we're still going minus two pi to two pi. And then everywhere we see an x, we just want to input minus x. But here, minus x squared, that's still gonna be an x squared. Then we'll just input it into the sine squared here. So this is gonna become sine squared minus x. And then in the denominator, we end up with one minus e to the minus x dx. But then let's just see what happens here on this sine minus x. Now, the key thing with this is sine's an odd function. So that allows us to take the minus sign out front and we can write this as minus sine of x. But then just notice the whole thing squared. So this whole thing squared. And when we do that, the minus becomes a plus and this just becomes sine squared x. So that's pretty nice. We can take this and put it back the way we had in the original and this just becomes, we can just have this as sine squared x. And then from here, what I can do is I actually just want to fix this because usually with King's principle, we like to get it back to look like the original and then add them together and get simplification that way. So the only thing really different here from our original problem is just this e to the minus x. And so we can kind of correct it by multiplying in e to the x over e to the x. So just going ahead with this, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna kind of leave it in the same form. I'll put parentheses, so I'll write it as x squared minus sine squared x, we're multiplying in e to the x in the numerator. And then when we distribute this in, we end up with now, this is gonna become e to the x minus one. But again, I want it to look like the original. So what I can do is if I just multiply in minus one to the denominator, that allows me to reverse the sign here. I don't want to change it. So let's just multiply minus out front. And then if we just put some labels on things, our original integral we'll call i. And then since this is equivalent to the original integral, this thing here is also going to be i. So what I want to do now is add these two together. What I'm going to do first is actually, let's, I should have just done this in the beginning, but let's put the minus sign, instead of having it up front, let's put the minus sign here on the minus e to the x. And then to make it clear on this one, we'll have this, this is like just one. So when we add them together, we have the same denominator. So for our two i, what's going to happen? We have the same bounds on everything. Then we have the same denominator and we have this part in common, x squared minus sine squared x. But now putting together, we have one copy minus e to the x copy. I can write this as one minus e to the x here, with the dx on the end. But the reason this works so well is because then we can just cancel one minus e to the x with one minus e to the x. And now we're just left with x squared minus sine squared x, which is something that's gonna be pretty easy to integrate. Before we do it and deal with this integral, let's just divide off this two so we've isolated our solution. And we'll multiply by one half over here, just so that we're focused on this. Now from here, what we can notice is that our integral, both these are squared, so this is actually gonna be an even function here. And that's gonna allow us to use this principle down here. It doesn't help that much, but it just allows us to take the lower bound, this minus two pi, and change that to zero. So we'll cross that out, make that a zero. And then all we need to do is we just need to bring two up front. So we bring a two up front, but that's nice because that's gonna just cancel with this one half. And then from here, I'm almost ready to integrate, but I just want to use a formula to reduce this sine squared. I can use the formula and write this like one half minus one half cosine two x. 
And then when we do this, now everything is going to be easy to integrate. Let's just rewrite the whole thing. So we have x squared distributed in the minus signs. So it's going to become minus 1 half minus times minus here is plus 1 half cosine 2x dx. Go ahead and integrate first. This is going to become x cubed over 3 minus here. This will be 1 half x. And then here we're going to have the 1 half in front. Integral of cosine 2x is going to be sine 2x, we bring out a 2 in the denominator times 1 half, this is going to give me 1 fourth here, and we just need to evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. Now just notice when you plug 0 in, it's going to be 0 everywhere, so let's ignore that part and just plug in 2 pi. So first, plugging in 2 pi here, this is going to become 8 pi cubed over 3, and then here you plug 2 pi in, 2 pi times 1 half is just pi, so for my final solution to this, we just have 8 pi cubed over 3 minus pi. Okay, there you have it. One quick note on this type of solution that this actually always works when you have symmetric bounds. The numerator is even, okay? You have a one, I think it has to be a one. You can have plus or minus here. And then this is a constant with an odd exponent. So I know there's like, oh, it's a very specific problem, right? It's got all these requirements. But if you do have a problem with all this, look what happens, it just reduces down to this one right here where we just end up with the numerator the lower bound becomes zero. And then hopefully, like in this case, the problem after you reduce it like this is a lot easier to deal with. Anyway, there you have it. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.